Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Tub Takes. This is our weekly video podcast where we talk about all the greatest, uh, the latest and greatest happenings in VGC. And this time, I have three special guests. I have uh, my co-host, who is always very special, Alex Underhill. How are you doing? Hello. I'm still here in Seattle. Adi is no longer. That's yes. Yes. Sadly, uh, <laughs> sadly, I'm not in Seattle anymore. But uh, if you missed our super secret stream yesterday, it's I think the vault is still up where I was in Seattle. Uh, we also got another Seattleite. We've got Michael. How you doing? Yeah, what's up? I'm basically the third host at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is your second straight week. I, I realized hey, third. That. Third? I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure. Because um, I think you guys, like, this is the third straight tub takes I've been on. Maybe I, I missed one in between, <laughs> but it's something like that. That's Hopefully funny. you guys aren't sick of VSM yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It, it, for what it's Dude, worth, I need one of my haters, like one of those haters in the comments. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoever that, whoever you are, the one listener that hates Rajan, if you could give that bit of that energy to ESM, that'd be awesome. You know, you know, we, I know we got some size spam haters in, in in chat. You know, sound off. You know, really just throw some hate ESM away. <laughs> uh, and then, last but not least, we got uh, Mr. Hot Dog himself, Jesse. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Of course, it's great to have you. Uh, and yeah, congrats on your run as well. Uh, I, but yeah, so today, I guess we're gonna we're gonna jump right into it. We're gonna talk about uh, a few different topics, and I of course did not pull all of them up right away. I just pulled up Vancouver because I figured that would be talking about first. But no, we got uh, some housekeeping first, which is uh, a couple of regionals have signups going up. So first and foremost, uh, Los Angeles regionals is coming up in end of May. It's actually a ways away, uh, and signups for that are happening. Tomorrow, if you are watching on Twitch, today, if you were happen- watching on YouTube. Uh, so, yeah, be ready for that. Um, it is, we do not have information about the size of the regional, uh, but Los Angeles is going to be big. SoCal is, is I mean, just California in general, gets so many people, and uh, and it's so accessible for everyone in the West Coast. It's the last event of the year of the NAIC, so people will uh, be desperate to get their world's invite if they are in a spot where they need a few more points to get it. Um, and yeah, like this is, if, if the cap is going to be 900, I wouldn't stress too much if the cap is 500, because this is in downtown Los Angeles and space is expensive, then uh, it might cap right away. So if you are planning on going, or if you're thinking about going, it might be worth just registering, um, on the dot. I think we did talk about this last week with ESM. So I'm not going to ask uh, all of us again, because I think we already talked about whether we're going or not, but Jesse, are you, are you thinking about going to uh, LA or no? I'm not planning on it. No, I only get so much time off from work and I'm yeah. pretty close to my invite. I can probably squeak in with some locals and I have Indy planned. So Indy's probably going to be my last major of the season, NAIC if I'm really feeling it, but no plans for LA. Got it. Okay. Okay. How about if you don't mind me asking how much CPU you at? I'm at 410 right now. I still have three MSSs in my BFL that I can uh, take advantage of. So I believe nice, between nice. that and Indy, I should probably be fine. Are you doing yeah, the Global that's... Challenge? We'll be talking about that soon. <laughs> <laughs> I actually avoided the first two just because the first one was the Knoxville weekend, and I just right. didn't want to deal with that headache. The second one I actually completely forgot about. I was going <laughs> out that weekend and just forgot about it. So I signed up and then left my Switch at home, and I was up north uh, all weekend, so I didn't actually have a chance to play that. But this one... I'm probably going to suck it up and do it just because last season I missed my invite <laughs> off of a whole 10 points. So I think if that happens again, <laughs> I will go crazy. So I'm going to sign up just to, you know, say I did it, get my safe points, and yeah. Yeah, smart, <laughs> smart, smart. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, that, that's a good way to wrap it up with a couple of locals too. And then, yeah, you also have, you know, India or NAIC if you want. Mm-hmm. Um Mm-hmm. The other one that's happening, it's sign up on the same day and the regionals held on the same day, right, Adi? Uh, mm-hmm. it's the, it is none other than Mexico City. Special event, rather. But yeah, that is uh, that is okay. notable. There's also a Peru special event, but I don't think signups are on the same day. I don't know when the signups are. Uh, I, I, think I, I think I clicked through the website, but um, I guess I could pull it up here. Yeah, oh, the it's, Peru- it's, I didn't realize, so wait, there's a third event on the same day? Yeah, there's, a, there's also the Peruvian special event on the same day, or at least the same weekend. I don't know. Wait, special what? events are sometimes one day. But uh, yeah, yeah, there's three events on the same weekend um, in May. Uh, the last weekend, I believe that they are allowed to host events, period. Uh, actually, I should check that um, because I know that I don't know when the last Latam special events are. Uh, right. But that's crazy. We were talking about like the, the history. Was it last week or whatever? About like yeah. the triple hires. And to bring it back. Guess, mm-hmm. To bring it back. Yeah. So yeah. you can see here the Peru one is, is also happening. Uh, it is, by the way, cool that they have different organizers. Just a little excited about that. 
uh, other than just Copac. But yeah, um, yeah. There, though we heard that there were no locals in June, right? That's what we were talking about in the car, Michael. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah correct. Yeah. Um, so I, I imagine that that also extends to special events and regional level events, which is why we have this and not one the first weekend of June, which I think still before NAIC, theoretically legal, but it does look like they're hosting a hard cutoff for all events that are not NAIC in, uh, at the end of May that weekend. So, um, yeah, there can be a couple of events here that is going to maybe make it so LA is less likely to cap. Los Angeles is probably the single most accessible place in the United States for people coming from uh, Mexico or Central America um, or even South America. And so now they have their own events to go to if they, again, need that last little bit of CP to get to Worlds. Uh, so that might put a damper on the international flavor, at least, of, of the Los Angeles regionals. But um, yeah, uh, either of y'all going to Mexico City? Jesse? <laughs> Yeah, no, I can't say I got any plans on that either. It'd be a nice place to go visit, but uh, I think I'll pass on the special event. I do love that Latin America is getting some more love. They really need it sometimes. Like, I'm decent friends with a few of the Ecuadorian players, and it just, they need more love. They, they have such talented players, and I'm glad that they're at least getting something. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's so, it, it probably a bit annoying for them to have to, like, you know, wait till these events are announced, like, much more last minute than, you know, us getting them at the beginning of the season. World States. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah, I don't think I'm planning on going to LA or Mexico City. I'll see you in Peru, Adi. Okay. Um, <laughs> hey, uh, last year's Peru special event had like three or four Americans there. <laughs> so. <laughs> Pete. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then the yeah. other the other tournament you got to sign up for this weekend is, uh, or this this week rather, uh, probably not. Well, you could do it. I want to say, you, is the uh, the global challenge is coming up this weekend. So, yeah, we have a uh, your last global challenge. There is a BFL of three. So even if you got points in the last two, you can still get points in this one, which is different from last year. Um, of course, mm -hmm. usually the it is easier to get points, uh, or it is it requires a lower score for the third one usually because a lot of people have already qualified for Japan nationals or Korean nationals. A lot of people have gotten their world's invite over the last few weeks, last month, um, and so. I think that um, there will be fewer people trying super hard, but you know, um, it still is a lot of points, 160 points on the line for the first place. So uh, yeah, don't forget to sign up before it starts. You have to lock your team when you sign up. Um, yeah, any, any, are, anything else to add to that? Are y'all playing the G? Uh, I know, Jesse, we already asked you, but uh, are the rest of y'all playing the uh, Global Challenge? Don't know if I have too much interest in playing it. I, uh, I might just like sign up just to you know have a team in case something changes but uh maybe just like my vancouver team or something but yeah also just using this time to announce real quick that i don't think we have any kind of uh marathon stream planned we might have some people still stream uh, it depends on if anybody wants to stream his run but i i asked a lot of other people and like a lot of people that did the the marathon run and everyone's like either busy or can't do it and so uh probably not gonna make that happen and I, I, i've also just like my personal i probably could do it i just have low motivation i just don't really care for reg f anymore you know because no more no more majors yeah, this, in it so. this format has been kicking my ass raging bolt is ruining my life <laughs> <laughs> well good thing you will have to deal with it for the rest of your life <laughs> yep <laughs> oh man i hope they yeah i hope they thanos all the protosynthesis mods all the cork drive mods from next gen oh, and please, for, for please, the I, for, will... just forever just forever <laughs> if you want to play that if you want to hear my theory about it, uh, mm -hmm. I think that we are going to have the Paradox Mons next gen, and we won't have the Gen 8 Legendaries next gen, because this gen, we have the Gen 8 Legendaries, but we don't have the Gen 7 Legendaries. So I think what's going to happen in Gen 10 is that we're going to get the Gen 9 <sighs> uh, Paradox Mons and stuff, but we won't have Urshifu and like Galar and Moltres and that kind of stuff. You know, I'd and... be willing to take that trade. Yeah, it then, does sound re pretty reasonable, honestly. You know, if I could know Urshifu, that maybe maybe that's not too start. bad. Maybe well, it's a start. well, you know, the first DLC of the next generation is going to be uh, a lot of Gen Six Pokemon that you can only catch in Gen Six, and uh, it's going to force you to buy Pokemon ZA. Like that's the real reason, you know that, right? It's like <laughs> it's just yeah, they're gonna they're gonna keep the Gen Nine legendaries in because they want people to want to get into VGC to have to buy Scarlet and Violet. Uh, <laughs> Pyramid scheme mm -hmm. gets deeper. Well, by that logic, they'll keep. The, the Gen 8 Legendaries in, but my copium is that there's no Gen 8 Legendaries in the game. 
next uh, yeah. round. Yeah, we'll sorry, Maltrace, you gotta pay the price of the Hershey <laughs> first. Same with you, Reggie, you like the Reggie Drago. Uh, yeah, please, please. <laughs> That's okay. I'm begging you. The thing is, every single generational gimmick is get gets broken by different Pokemon, and Reggie Alki and Reggie Drago are constantly on watch to get broken by a generational gimmick. So honestly, probably okay. for the better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true, true, true. Uh, um, but uh, anyways, we're a bit, we're a bit sidetracked here, um, and so yeah, I do want to say that yeah, the the global challenge um, is this weekend, so we probably won't be doing any kind of big marathon though but yeah, Adi, are you are you going to be streaming it i i think i will stream it i think it's i think that playing 40 games or whatever is so much more bearable when you're streaming um Agreed. and so Agreed. i i will i will be streaming it even though i do need points for our world's invite uh i miss points in vancouver we'll talk about that uh, alex and i probably won't talk about it because we talked about uh, our runs yesterday um you can watch that thought mm. if you want to watch but um but yeah so i i do need i do still need some points for our world's invite so i would like to get those um but i will stream it and i've got a fun team uh, a fun little variant of my Vancouver team that I've been putting together. So, uh, yeah, it should be it should be a good time. Uh, come through this weekend. Um, I usually stream Saturday and Sunday if I can and don't play until then. So, yeah. Awesome, awesome. All right. Uh, the next thing that we want to talk about is actually something that uh, I kind of helped start uh, by just seeing this tweet on, uh, on Twitter, I guess, like, or on X or whatever. Um, you... Don't call uh, it X, bro. No, I will. I, I've never actually called you it. You think X. it's a government name? Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, I saw this and I was like, wait, the 3DS like online functionality is about to be shut off before April 9th. I was like, it would be really cool if Tub hosted some kind of like send off to like the 3DS format or formats uh, that will. That, I didn't even like realize they were still playable online, and so uh, Tom Hayden uh, picked that up. And was like, okay, you know, I'll run these tournaments. Let's uh, let's do it. And so he's going to be hosting these tournaments uh, all through the next couple of uh, week or weeks, I guess. Uh, I don't know. The next couple of days. Um, Wait, they're so... open team sheet? No. no. <laughs> oh, they have I the open team list tag. <laughs> yes. Yes, I know. Uh, he replied. Uh, you can see okay. talent down there, actually. Oh, okay. Um, said, uh, actually, open team leaves there's that left over, and he said no, he's, it's closed. So we're good, we're good. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's closed sheet. I actually got to see if um, if I still have like my my teams <laughs> on my 3ds. I, I'd definitely be down to enter in some of these, and mm -hmm. um, if I can, I don't have a what is it called a, a capture card like installed 3ds. Uh, so I probably would just take this camera here. And just sit it in front of the 3DS, and <laughs> if that's good enough, if I want to stream it, I might find some way. You're going old, um, old school, I see. Yeah, because like I, I, if I'm playing them, I really want to be able to like you know share with that, uh, share that with people. Mm -hmm. but it, <laughs> I don't know if it'll be possible or not. Regardless, it it's a really fun thing to have the opportunity to do. So shout out to Tom for hosting it. Yeah, uh, I don't even know if I have my 3DS. I gotta go dig in my closet and see if I can find it, but. Um... Uh, uh, getting mons is it was a little harder back then. Uh, so, so good good luck if you don't have your team on cart already. Uh, you might need to might need to reach out to some some older heads. But you know, it's a uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I got to see if I can find it. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm gonna get yelled at for saying this in this call, but I actually have never owned a 3ds or any of the. Oh 3DS games. no! So, are you a Dynamax baby? I I am. I'm, I've been playing for longer. I just I skipped the 3ds era. Wait, I am a Dynamax baby, yes, the, for VGC. You skipped the Dynamax era? So you were playing back, like, in the DS era? Like, it's showdown type of stuff, like singles. I, I'm a oh, okay, Dynamax okay. baby. Gotcha, gotcha. But for, like, IRL tours, what, what was your first tournament, if you don't mind me asking? It was actually, I think Audi was there. It was a double header in Toronto, January 4th, 2020. It was an MSS. I mm -hmm. lost in top four to Binji Wang and found out the hard way what Durant does. No, no. <laughs> I think I think that was my last tournament in in Toronto. That was right before I left, mm -hmm. or that that weekend or something like that. Yeah, um, yeah. That's I, I, I honestly I I have the opinion that VGC was like always going to explode in 2020, um, even without the pandemic. Uh, but the real reason was just like it. No one had a 3DS, and that's why people weren't playing it back at the end of Ultra Series and stuff. Just like or 2019 in general. Just like, yeah, no, who, who, which kid has a 3DS? Like, no, the, it's such an old console. Everyone moved over to Switch. So, um, 
Yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Uh, so, and even I don't have my 3DS anymore. I don't, ugh, I can't remember the last time I, uh, I, I used it. <laughs> um, but yeah, look out for this, uh, again, go, go check out Tom Hayden. Um, it should be, this should be a good time. I hope to play it as well, but, um, yeah. Uh, what, what, what's next? We're talking about Vancouver next? I think we're just unless, launching right into it. Yeah. No, unless, unless, you to to, unless you want to dive into what teams you're going to use in, uh, in the, uh, <laughs> Pass for about tournaments. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have to go boot up my 3DS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, okay. So we had the Vancouver Regional this past weekend. Uh, you know, I think you know all four of us in this call can really call it our uh, our local regional. You know, both Pacific Northwest, <laughs> the Canadian connection. So we're all we're all really locals here. Uh, really, can, can, <laughs> Vancouver truly a melting pot. Everyone's really a local there. Um, and <laughs> a lot of. You can see, you can see, uh, it was won by James Evans, who beat uh, who beat Brady in finals. That was a, a really fun finals match to watch. Uh, and of course, uh, we got uh, Michael, who finished top four along with Scott. Um, I guess Michael, do you want to tell us about uh, tell us about your experience, your run a little bit, your team? Yeah, sure. I can talk a little bit about it. So, uh, I've been holding on to this team for like a long time, uh, like over I want to say over a month. Um, the idea just came like in a shower, and I was just like tired of losing to Amungus Insin at the time, which was super popular. This was even before Japan Balance got popular. And so, uh, the previous team that I was using, which was Gouger with uh, Baxcalibur, had a, a really tough time with Insin and Amungus. Um, so I was just like, okay, I'm just gonna run Como, but like Como, uh, since I won Sacramento, there's been one really big notable mod that has come to stop uh Kamo from dominating the meta again which is um landerous eye and landerous eye at the end of reggae was super popular fell off a little bit at the beginning of reg F, but has basically come back in full force and so i needed a way to solve the landerous eye matchup and so i've always been interested in this uh size spam core of uh iron crown and ndd and I thought it was always really strong, but I didn't like the previous iterations of it that was full offense with like Chiyu and uh, Urshifu. It felt like it was super reliant on you getting both the Psychic Terrain and the um, and the Tailwind uh, on the field at the same time, and then and then also having uh, Chiyu or another offensive mod next to Iron Crown. And so it just felt impossible to like answer all of those questions, and I didn't really like playing the hyper offensive style of the other side spam mode, which required all the pieces to come together. And so um, then I was just like, I ran into somebody on the ladder while I was playing my other team, and I was like, I f fought this CM uh, booster crown, and I was kind of like rage laddering at that point a little bit, and <laughs> I lost to it. Uh, and it just clicked Call Mind on turn one, Terra Psychic, one shot my gouging fire and just swept my entire team and i was just like damn all right there's not even a, like i was I literally said to myself like that's not even a loss like this is not a real set i would never play against this at a regional which to be fair i probably would have never played it at a regional but i did steal their idea i don't remember who it was so you know if, if, if whoever it was wants to come forward and claim their idea or whatever like go for it whatever uh I, i'm admitting that i stole their idea <laughs> but i thought that there, I, that was I know super strong. I know one person who has been who had also been cooking this beforehand, and it was it was Chase. So it might have been him. <laughs> Maybe. Um, so yeah, I, I stole it off the uh, like I just stole the idea off of ladder, and I thought that the two paired super well together because the issues with Iron Crown and NDD are like Insin and um, like Insin and Rillaboom, and the mon that punishes those two mons the hardest is Como. You, they cannot ever win against Como, basically, uh, regardless of the situation. Um, and so, this was, um, yeah. So somebody said, didn't uh, I also use something in DOU? I actually, I stole the or the DOU team. I just literally took this team that I was going to use at Vancouver and just ported it to DOU. So I'd been cooking this for a long time beforehand. Yeah, no, I like that. ESM said he was like, I had been keeping this like on the side for like a while now and i'm like you were laddering on main the whole time though. No, right right i mean I, there is no secret about it i guess i think uh the only caveat to that is that i was laddering on main but it was during like eu time uh, eu friendly times so like 
some uh, North American t uh, players may not have known about it. I'm not certain. Uh, like you would have to ask other people if they had known about this coming into this regional. Um, but anyway, so I, I laddered with this team a lot. Uh, and then the last two slots were kind of a rotating door for a little bit. I had Hydragon in the builder at one point and you know, like in the end, I think none of my ideas are actually original. And so I just go back to the same stuff all the time. And uh, of course, Tyranitar made it, uh, made its way into the builder. I like, I think I added Tyranitar into the builder and I was like, I miss Tyranitar. Like I didn't play any games with Tyranitar for like a couple months or, or like a month or whatever. And then I like added Tyranitar. I'm like, damn, this, this is Dude, the Pokemon. Dude, he's a uh, 4X week one trick. He's got uh, <laughs> a fairy cool. week. Como, Titar, who's got the quad week to fighting. Uh, he had Rock Dog back in the day, which had a, a hefty two uh, 4X weeks, but we still <laughs> kept the the dream alive by bringing Whimsicott onto the team, which is quite a <laughs> week to poison. Um, yeah, I, don't, I feel like if Whimsicott was still just 2X week to poison, it would still probably be pretty devastating for it, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> but yeah, so this, this team came together. I, I, I won't go too much uh, into depth of, about the exact ideas of, of why the rest of the team was like the way it was constructed, but I did really like the team. So came into the regional, uh, super confident as well. Cause like the day before I hit top 10 on ladder or something. And, um, so I was waiting and, uh, I've been addicted to Pokemon. So I've just, I was playing a ton before and, um, I had a lot of like expectations for myself coming into the tournament because. Uh, like basically, after SAC, um, I just wanted to show that like I can still play at a high level, and like I barely missed at Portland uh, at Cut. I went 10-4, and I f felt like I should have made Cut with that team. And so um, I wanted to at least get to 11-3 at this uh, regional, and uh, ended up going 8-1 uh, in day one. My only loss to Jesse actually, and uh, I don't know if you know this, Jesse, but I did the calcs afterwards. <laughs> It was a really and low roll, wasn't it? Like really it was an eighteen percent roll to kill, and I, should, I, I, I figured it was something absurd like that. I, yeah, um, should should have dropped the calc, and the calc is right. <laughs> just just saved it for that. <laughs> I would have. Oh, that would have been really have. funny. That would have been funny, uh, I guess. That was after day one, right? Did you play in day one? No, yeah, right. it was after day one. But I was definitely mulling over it because um, I, I, I think um, even even with that, like I made. Uh, I was in like a pretty winning position in game three, and you called me on uh, an over aggressive play, which I like made a big mistake on. And so I was I was like a little mad about that, but then uh, I did play I think seven Canadians in day one, and I went six and one Actually, against all yeah, the Canadians. No, I, I know about half the people you played. Yep, <laughs> <laughs> That's, that is a lot of Canadians. Um, and I, you guys actually came out to this tournament, uh, Jesse. There was there, like I think I was driving up with ESM and Adi, and I asked them, mm -hmm. like, you know, how many Canadians do you guys think will be at this tournament? We're looking at about like 400 players. What did we actually end up getting? Does it tell me at the top of this? It's 401. 401. Yeah, cool. A so pretty easy number to work with, and I think they were saying like 80 to 100, and I believe we find the final this actually, number. Pokey has it. Pokey says 208 oh, yeah. NA, 172 Canadian. Yeah, that 172. Is... Wow. Mm -hmm. So Crazy. Canada really came out for this one, which was really awesome. It meant that, you know, NA invaders are going to go up against a lot of Canadians, like uh -huh. ESM. So, uh -huh. uh, and, and how about that top cut, huh? <laughs> hey, okay. All those you know, if you go down to 9th no. and 10th, yeah. there, you'll, see, you'll start to see where, uh, where we went wrong. It's the whole uh, resistance we can't uh, control thing. Yeah, I guess that was <laughs> yep, our yep, yep, yep. Honestly, yeah. fair. Nah, <laughs> I feel bad for Sean Mark. He got he went he went eight one too, right? Like in day one, um, that's usually and good that's enough. That's the thing with with Marcus too. He started seven two. He's won the first four rounds. He went four zero to four one in day oh. two, and he still bubbled. That's, like, that's oh. really frustrating. Yeah, the I seven, feel for seven. him on that one. That's mm -hmm. tough. Uh, that that's I think what Rajan happened to Rajan at uh, at Charlotte. He was complaining about it where he faced the uh, the seven seven round one and then had to knew he had to win out. He lost the last round and missed it. Like. Yeah, that's re day two resistance. Super wonky. So that's unfortunate. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Also, because like the day two res, just with the way the system works, it's like because you can play somebody. Um, I think I played Alberto in the last round uh, for my win and in, but it was Alberto's win and not in 
because since he played mm. me and I was two and two at the time, um, it ended up being that like he would never be able to make it on res because if he beat me, he would get a forty percent res on on his. I'm pretty sure he got seventeenth um, overall too, so it was just not. A good yeah, it, it was yeah. brutal. No, like getting matched into me was just unlucky because if he if I beat him, then he gets a sixty percent res, which isn't really that good for. Uh, and then if he loses to me, then he or if he beats me, then he gets a forty percent res. So it's a winning right, nod right, right. or. Adi, how about this? We do resistance, but you drop the worst one. Does that fix it? Um, the pro the problem really is just like day two resistance. Uh, like I think that for day one, ideally you would cut the bot the your worst one if you have nine rounds worth of with worth of people. I think the biggest problem is that they don't look at your overall record, right? Like if so, yeah, it, it sucks that. Uh, say, you know, Scott finished, what, uh, at 11-3, right? Um, and went 8-1 to 11-3. He's a 3-2, like you said, right? So it, it doesn't actually look like you have a 13-3 and three on your resistance. It looks like you have a 3-2, a and two, which is not actually that impressive, right? Whereas if someone right. goes... Yeah. Yeah, and so, I don't know. It just feels like it's very marginal, especially with people going 9-0 and knowing they have to win 2 to cut, and then they go 2-3 and it counts as a negative on your resistance, stuff like that. Like, it, there's just so many ways that five rounds, only looking at those five rounds can get really wonky. Um, when everyone starts with different records and needs to do different things to cut. And if they just looked at your overall record, I honestly think it would be fine. Mm -hmm. it, it just gives you a huge advantage for being 8-1 uh, or 9-0 going into day two, basically. Like, the, the adva advantage is so much bigger than in... Um, so, I mean... But, but also, it well, makes you know. it so your opponents are, don't want to play you. Be, or, like, it's really unfortunate for your opponents to play yeah. you because it makes it so even if you cut, you're going to be a worse resistance for them. I know the last round of Charlotte last year, me and Chapa played. Uh, we both went 8 1 day one. We both were uh, potentially had a chance to cut going into the last round. But because we played each other and not someone who went 7 2 to um, whatever the, the our record was going into the last round, uh, neither mm -hmm. of us had a chance to cut going into the last round. Just big beast yeah. of that like 20% flip on resistance. So yeah. Whack. So whack. The, the pairings just become, make it more, even more random because you could just pull everyone who goes 7 2 and that like started winning out or you could pull everyone that went eight one and like lost one round or whatever and that 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 20 percent difference makes a huge drift so mm -hmm. yeah i feel for sean mark too that's that's such a top schedule too so uh, unfortunate but that is that is how resistance goes um michael i know we interrupted you a little bit did you did you have anything else to say about your uh, your run um yeah and then day two um going to day two i felt like I was playing super clean. Uh, I think all my wins were uh, generally pretty clean. I think my round nine, I got pretty lucky in game one, but like everything else, uh, I felt like I was doing really well. And then even in um, my round 11 and 12, which were losses, they were both due to me getting both unlucky and also playing bad. So I felt really good uh, on the day in general. Um, until I ran into James Evans, which he just literally like called me every single turn. I think uh, I thought about the set, rewatched it afterwards, and uh, I think I still had a relatively favorable matchup going into that set. And I just needed to get like one turn right between those. Uh, like I had like four or five chances uh, in bo between the two games to win. To win, um, and I didn't get any of them right. So like he just called me every time. So like my only real regret uh, in this is that I wasn't ha able to have like a great stream showing. Uh, both of my stream sets, like I kind of messed them up uh, a little bit. And so, um, other than that, I, I had a great tournament, and I think the team was like excellent. And um, you know, I had some worries about like, is this too much cooking? Um, was I really going to be able to perform with this? And I think on the day, it did. I did end up showing up. And even with like whatever, I slept like four hours between the two, uh, between the two days. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. sleep is fake. If you're looking for the uh, the, the team, the code, I think we're gonna we're gonna record a team report at some point, um, some yeah. point this week. So we'll uh we'll yeah we'll get that out soon. Um, and uh, we'll get a little more depth about you know all the EV spreads and stuff. But yeah, uh, and then Jesse, you also made day two at this tournament. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about your experience yeah so i went into it knowing this was going to be the last major of 
the regulation that I was going to do. And I've been saying since day one that I believe that this is a comfort format. There is just so much going around, and especially Please. at a tournament like Vancouver, where there's going Please. to be a lot of, you know, random stuff thrown at you. You need to, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> like what you're playing and feel comfortable playing it. And that's, I've been using Tailwind all format. At Charlotte, it was the uh, Glim Torn stuff that it's like Kyle Livinghouse is six, but it was like a different teched out version that it was like me, Adi, Chuppa, Marcus, a bunch of us brought that to uh, Charlotte and we did awfully with it because it turned out to be the subpar <laughs> version. So for Knoxville, <laughs> I ran it back with the better version. That's where my disdain for Raging Bolt came in, started ruining my life. And mm -hmm. so I was like, okay, I need something for that. And at the same time, uh, Justin Tang was working on this banned Landorus version of Tailwind. And I was really starting to dig that. Uh, Hem, Chuppa, Semper, a bunch of them brought it to the uh, GC. Semper did really well at the second GC with it, and I was starting to really, you know, vibe with it and enjoy it. I brought it to some locals. It did well, but the big thing that was the issue was it had no size band matchup. Originally on their version, it was uh, Goldango over Glim, and it was Urshtark over Chinpao. And the Lando was Terra Water at first, and then switched to Terra Fairy. So I kind of just stared at the builder for a little while, because <laughs> I was going to an MSS, and at my locals, if you don't have a size fan matchup, you're going to lose. Like, there's so many <laughs> more locals that are just very addicted to running it, and they're good players in their own right, but it's like, is there you, know, a, you just need a matchup for it. Is there a single local in the entire world that doesn't have just an abundance of size fan players? <laughs> <laughs> very... Very fair, very fair. <laughs> Toronto has an epidemic, though, is all I'm going to say. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so I, I was looking at some Kelks, I'm like, wait a minute. If I put Terra Ground on Lando, I can Terra Ground Stomping Tantrum, switch in the power, bait a wide guard, and just kill the NDD turn one. So I ran with that, went to the local, went undefeated, and I'm like, you know what, yeah, no, I'm locking this in. And then uh, eventually I changed some more stuff around. I came back to Glim over Gold just because Glim was really good into the Firewater Grass Volcarona stuff that was popping up a lot closer towards uh, Vancouver. So it was just kind of like I took both Tailwind teams that I really liked. I smashed them together and made this weird love child and mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> just rocked with it because it was something I was comfortable with. Yeah, the Terra Ground uh, seems hype. I, when I saw that, I was like, wait, no, that's not how they were doing it. What? Well, that's not how I know this team to be. <laughs> Um, it is the that, ultimate, that was... yeah, it's the ultimate no-nonsense tech. When you're going to Vancouver, <laughs> Vancouver was my first regional back in 22, and I've gone to it every year since. Vancouver is the one regional where you need some no-nonsense stuff, because Vancouver's going to throw a lot of no nonsense at you. So you either need, like, a very, very good defensive backbone that can deal with that nonsense, or you need something that just deals absurd amounts of damage to plow through that nonsense. Mm-hmm. That's a good. That's a good philosophy. A good way to approach it. <laughs> it's definitely a, the West Coast uh, experience. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, um, all of our all of our regionals are Mickey, unfortunately. Although and... I did play Dozo, I, 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 most of my rounds were kind of like a blur to me. Starting seven zero, I kind of I think I got complacent in my last rounds. But Zachary was a good like we had a good set. You know, my, I think in that one my bleak ones did catch up to me because up until round seven. Uh, I was very net positive lucky, which, you know, running a Tailwind team, you kind of have to be net positive lucky. I would, It would be the best team in the format if, you know, there was less variance, I would say, personally. But, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. nothing too crazy. I hit what I was sort of expecting to hit. You know, you have Dozo, you have a Hail matchup, some uh, Raging Bolt stuff, Gouging Fire stuff. Uh, I can't say I was prepared to uh, hit into your team there, Michael, but... Uh... <laughs> That, that, I described that match to my friends as, it was basically like an 1100s match. It was Terra Ground, Lando, and Terra Psychic <laughs> Crown just throwing attacks at each other and, you know, just seeing what could come out from that. Yeah. I yeah. That. That's a great description. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, other than that, you know, the Tailwind Mirror with Ian. Ian is probably the best sport <laughs> that I've ever played. Not only did he get very unlucky on stream, it was against a guy in a hot dog suit, so now that he's got that label on him for <laughs> yeah, the rest yeah. of his career. And I did actually, I played him again game uh, day two, and that, oh one my was, God. that one was a cleaner set. That one was a much cleaner set. He actually, he was so sick of doing the Glim speed ties that he opted into a different line, but in that you know mirror, you kind of need to do the Glim speed ties. It's just the optimal line, because you don't have anything that can get rid of Glim other than Glim that doesn't get the Toxic Spikes up. 
and dude, that sounds very fun and engaging and very. Oh yeah, made. I, I like love that. yours. It, it's lovely. This format is lovely, and everything is fine. <laughs> but yeah, the seven zero run was cool. I've never done that before. I mm -hmm. definitely was feeling myself a little bit, and then uh, crashed pretty hard. I did have a, a circumstance in day two that I did get a game loss for round ten. Totally my fault. I can't complain about that, you know. But uh, it's one of those things where I like. I would have liked to see what could have been. My day yeah, two didn't totally. exactly go my way, luck wise, or you know, with the game loss. But I, I just I would have liked to see what could have been because in ga round ten it was a, I'd say it was a pretty even matchup. Like I won the first game of the set and then I lost the second, but because I had the game loss, you know, that was it. I would have liked to have a game three and then. Who knows, I could have won that and then lost my next four rounds, or I could have won out and gotten to cut. It's just, you know, it's the what could have been that kind of is stinging mm -hmm. a little bit, but I still had a great time in Vancouver. Nice. Yeah. Um, but, um, okay, so now that we've uh, talked about your run, let's actually bounce back up to talking about some of the uh, yeah. other finishers. I don't think we actually talk about some, about... like, actually good players now, like James Evans. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's talk yeah. about this. What do you think? Gouging fire. Is it is it good? Is it bad? Are you bad because you think gouging fire is bad? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I get PTSD from gouging fire. All of my locals are either Psy Spam or gouging fire, and it's like, mm -hmm. I'm so sick of seeing this team. I <laughs> I will say, I mean, we, we've talked about this at length, but uh, it does feel like, you know, we're going in circles a little bit. Uh, this is not, I mean, there's, there's definitely some changes to the traditional. This is, this is, I don't think he had, did he have Madison play? I don't, I don't remember James's original gouging fire team but you know uh james has been using gouging fire for a while did really well i believe knoxville with it uh and mm -hmm. yeah like uh just just kept innovating on the same archetype uh, even though it was going out of popularity and did very well with it and again like you said jesse i think that's largely because uh he was so comfortable with this format and and i think right now at this point in the format where it's so diverse where it goes so wide where no one can cover everything and you're gonna always have some bad matchups knowing the how you just knowing how to play it is, is so so important um, and optimizing your team, knowing every single thing that you can, uh, every, every single like pe inch of potential you can get out of your team. I don't know what uh, units you use for potential, but um, <laughs> yeah, getting everything you can out of your team um, is, is so important. And that's where comfort really comes in. Um, getting your reads right is where comfort comes in. And so, yeah, big congrats to, to James for, uh, is this his first regional championship? It is his first uh, regional win so, yes. in yeah. Masters, yeah. Yep. Uh, congrats, to, mm -hmm. congrats to James for that. Uh, any thoughts on this team, guys? Uh, nothing really to say because it is like very similar to what he ran a couple months ago. I think the flutter was Sash back then when he got second, um, which is interesting, but then just kind of went with the more traditional specs on this team. Uh, other than that, the team is just kind of uh, well-rounded and strong. Um, it's a archetype that we've seen, and you could probably skip right over Brady's team too. Uh, mm -hmm. Brady, you know... Uh, running Japan balance is like uh, people are calling it the double fake out plus Urshifu stuff. Like, it, I, I don't know. I don't know what ha was happening in Brady's games that he made it this far. No, no disrespect to him, but I was like, I thought we were supposed to be able to beat this, guys. I thought you had to go to the tournament with a matchup into this, and he got second. That's incredible. Uh, obviously, a testament to how well he was, how well he was playing, and how familiar with the team he was, and how strong and broken these uh, these Pokemon are. Raging Bolt is. Really I, I also want to say. For for this team, I think this team was the most common version of the team that I saw on ladder, like with the Wisp Ensign, with the Terra Steel on Urshifu, like Terra Steel on Landorus, like this was the most common version uh, like that I saw on ladder personally. And so like there were no variations, like this was something that if you didn't come into the tournament with a matchup with, against it, that's like basically your fault. But mm -hmm. I will say that this team also gives you the tools to outplay like basically any matchup. And so like if you play well enough, it doesn't really matter if your opponent is like supposed to be teched for it. It's like a lot of the time you can still win. It's like the tools are all in your your uh, court, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. And so, yeah, I, I think that it's, yeah, like ESM said, very well put, it's uh, it's a team that can play out of its bad matchups because it has just so many uh, broken Pokemon that have really well-rounded kits. Mm -hmm. um, Scott's team is oh, I something have that we've been on Brady's yeah, team, which is that uh, Safety Goggles and Will-O-Wisp and Cinderwar 
was as something that you know really grew in popularity recently too. I don't know if that was on the original version of this team. I don't even know what the original version of this team was, but uh, but yeah, that's something that I thought was really cool and you know maybe contributed to the uh, downfall of Amoongus that we have seen recently. Um, because that's a really cool way for this combine raging bolt to beat uh, Amoongus teams that it otherwise struggles with. That's a, a cool. I don't think I don't know if it was Ready's innovation. I've seen it around, but um, that that is another cool thing that I've seen. I've heard so, that the uh, wolf uh, is mostly there for you know the King Gambit matchup because I was watching finals and I'm thinking to myself, oh, why doesn't James just lean pretty hard into his uh, King Gambit here? And then Joe points out, well, he's got Willow Wisp. I'm like, yeah, that sounds about right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, also... Be really annoying for it. Go ahead. Yeah, Wisp also helps like a lot into like combo and some other stuff. But um, I think the reason as to why Amoongus is not that popular, uh, as Adi mentioned, I think my opinion on it is that a lot of the um, people who would normally be playing Amoongus have switched to this uh, double fake-out team. And so uh, the balance players, as you will, uh, most of them have opted into the double fake out core and playing around the uh, instant Amoongus. And they don't, uh, Amoongus and Rillaboom don't play that cleanly together. Uh, they have very similar weaknesses. And so, like, not only from a typing perspective, but just from like a counterpoint, counterplay perspective. So, they feel a lot of times hard to bring and together. And so, you know, if you are going to opt into one of the two styles, uh, or one of the two options of, Rillaboom or uh, Amoongus, the other one is just going to fall more out of favor. And so uh, it's not that surprising to me that Amoongus has mostly fallen off. Like, you know, there's still some people who really like it. I still think it's a strong Pokemon. Um, I think it's just that people right now are more of a fan of Rillaboom. Mm -hmm. And it actually, I mean, there were three in Top Cut, which I didn't I didn't even think about, but uh, two of them are on very, I think, the exact same team, uh, which we'll get to in a second. But yeah, uh, Alex, do you want to talk about Scott's team? Yeah, yeah. So Scott's team, um, this one, it's funny because it falls in the same umbrella as everybody else, you know, using comfort. It's not a common six in the metagame, but Scott has been using stuff like this for a very long time. Um, and this team is the other style of balance that uh, you could probably go for. You know, it, it's got some, some win condition Pokemon like Raging Bolt and Roaring Moon. Uh, not Raging Bolt, uh, uh, sorry, Roaring Moon and Goldengo, uh, kind of like the other team that has uh, Raging Bolt, you know, with the Calm Mines. Um, and, yeah, it's otherwise built around that defensive core of P2, Incident, and Amoongus. And Scott played it very masterfully in a lot of his stream sets. Uh, it, it showed that it, it's another team that, even if you are designed to beat teams like this, it's still going to give you some trouble because uh, the Pokemon all cover each other really well. There's uh, a lot of options to go slow or fast. Uh, I think it's a really well-built team, and uh, yeah, I like it because, you know, both Scott and ESM's teams were teams that weren't, like, super represented in the meta right now, but, you know, things that you could maybe see a bit more going forward. Maybe not ESM's team. Nobody should be using that shit. Never mind. Um, but Scott's <laughs> team. Scott's team is cool and, like, you know, actually reasonable to pick up. Mm -hmm. And it's just, like... Um... It's just a, it's a, I feel like it's a, a new take on a concept that was has been around for a while, right? Like, uh, he has been using a lot of these Pokemon, but um, I get, I, he made some changes to it that pretty distinguish it, distinguish it pretty significantly from the version that you know we saw uh, Eric Rios and Alex Gomez appropriate uh, a couple months ago. And yeah, mm -hmm. I mean it's it's but this this I think this variant is so much scarier. I think this, I think that this is so much less passive. It's so much more. I think Roaring Moon is the maybe the one of the Pokemon that is a little underutilized right now. Really like especially. Uh, with Amoongus, I think it is maybe one of the best Amoongus enablers, and flying coverage is something we really, really need right now. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think uh, I think this team is super good. I think this team is really cool. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I think this team is uh, Roaring Moon, Amoongus. Like, all the synergies on this team are just really nice. Like, uh, Roaring Moon pairs really well with Amoongus. Amoongus pairs really well with Golden Gold. Golden Gold play, pairs really well with Roaring Moon. Like, the, the two of them actually, uh, between the two of them, they resist every single type in the game except for ground. Um, and so just the defensive synergy, the offensive synergy works really well together. Instant and P2 also, like, you know, the instant P2 Amoongus core has been around for a long time, and they all complement each other really well. Uh, and now P2 with the more offensive capability to Terra, uh, Terra and Terra Blast as well. So, you know, it adds a, another facet to 
that uh, that core. And so like all of these Pokemon have a lot of different uh, offensive and defensive synergies with each other. And I think Roy I agree, Roaring Moon is probably one of the Pokemon that uh, is relatively unexplored right now. And um, I think it's just uh, a little bit harder to use because you can't fit it onto every team structure. Uh, you do need to play it pretty heavily around it. But if you can enable it, the Pokemon is very strong. So uh, I do I do quite like this team. Mm -hmm. Just going a little bit more into that, do you think that it's just sort of this, you know, booster attack DD that has merit right now, or do you think that we could kind of go back to late reg E, was it? E or F, where it was mm -hmm. booster speed, tailwind, breaking swipe, just sort of like support moon. Do you think that, that has a place in the meta right now? I would have to play with it more to to see if the support moon stuff is still good. I, I Like, I'd imagine that it'd still be decent. I think the only uh issue with it right now is probably like there is a lot of terra fairy going around and it is pretty weak to terra fairy so like you would need something to complement that um but i do think the attack booster stuff even just speed booster maybe with acrobatics could even be good like a mix of the two sets but um i'm not certain like i do think the mon has a lot of potential and it just isn't explored super hard right now i think speed booster can really struggle with the fact that it feels like every single thunder main right now is speed booster as well um, and that, that, that was around even back in, in the previous regulations. But, uh, the, the other thing is that now we have Gouching Fire, which is, does something very similar, but it's not weak to Speed Booster Flutter. And in fact, loves facing Speed Booster Flutter, I would say. Uh, and so that is, maybe not loves, but certainly doesn't mind facing Speed Booster Flutter, uh, at the very least. And so that's one of those things where, um, I would probably think that that, that support set is a little outclassed. There's probably a team that can use it, but I would generally think that Gouging Fire doesn't have Tailwind, but has a lot of the other, uh, utility moves, um. And then on the other hand, the uh, Dragon Dance set, it's something that I don't think anything else can really effectively do, which is why I think that's the that's the one that I'd be using. I think it benefits from Amoongus a lot more as well. Um, whereas the you don't really want to put two support Pokemon on the field next to each other, uh, usually, unless you're Alex, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the uh, I want to point out that there was a similar team in top 16 from Zachary uh, Minch. I'm not sure how to say this one, um, but... Zachary's team was Urshifu over the Golden Go, uh, another one that's built around the Dragon Dance uh, guy, and it's otherwise got a lot of, like, you know, small things that maybe separate it, but, uh, you know, like the Amoongus doesn't have Sludge Bomb, but a uh, very similar structure there, um, just kind of proving that that type of team can do it in multiple senses. It looks like uh, Joshua Denk's team is also similar instead now we have urshifu yeah, water uh, over joshua has the uh charlotte version of scott's team i right. actually played both of them i played uh zach is it yeah i played zach and i also played uh joshua but not scott uh, zach day one no, i didn't play scott but gotcha. uh zach's team is actually i believe he got coaching with neil and i believe that that's uh neil's take on the team from what i remember yeah, I think I had seen uh, Neil using something close to that um, with the the Urshifu water, the the one that Zachary was using, the bulky Urshifu water mm -hmm. set. Um, it's definitely pretty interesting. And then, uh, yeah, so uh, let's go back up to the, some of the top teams. I think you can mm -hmm. knock out Ashton and uh, and Brandon. Who was it? Brandon and Brandon kind of together. There's the super they had the same time. thing. But yeah, they're the same team. Um, and this is a uh, this team's. Um, looks like it, very similar to the team that Riley had been using and Joe had been using in Reg E, with uh, with one notable change. Um, the Raging Bolt is on the team, and uh, was it a Landorus before? What was it before? Dragonite. Dragonite, Dragonite. right, yes. Um, so, sorry, Alex, I know I interrupted you. Eight. Go ahead. No, no, you're good, you're good. I was just going to say, like, basically the same thing. It's just Dragon for Dragon. Um, you know, but you would think that maybe that meant the Raging Bolt would be Assault Dusted, and, you know, I actually kind of assumed that looking at it, but... You open the sheet and it's safety goggles. Um, I guess the team just mm -hmm. wanted to respect Amoongus a bit more. Uh, uh, Ashton was AV. Oh, okay. Yeah. There we go. Um, that that does make a bit of sense to me. Um, you can probably do it either way, honestly. Mm. Uh, it looks like uh, Brandon was actually respecting Amoongus extra <laughs> with uh, Terra Grass as well. Uh, he probably had one <laughs> bad game against Amoongus and said, never again, bro. I, I cannot handle this. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that, that's pretty honestly pretty reasonable I can't say I totally disagree with that I, I sometimes have a bad game against Amoongus I'm like alright this team is not worth using um, it is miserable playing the game when 
all like four of your guys are just asleep and you're just sitting there like what am i doing here <laughs> like getting yeah. locked up by a mushroom especially on cart because you have to watch all of the animations of you get put to sleep <laughs> you get to see all your dudes eyes close it's just not a good time rolling the dice like you know you you wait till your turn and then it says is still asleep and you're like all right should i just forfeit now i can't i have to wait for the animations to finish playing mm -hmm. um, ashton Ashton did go 3-0 against amoongus from what i can tell um so uh, uh no he, no, he like lost to it no, he lost to it he lost it uh he lost to animoongus as well okay so you know it, sure, give, sure. so maybe given his given his record maybe a below average matchup to amoongus but yeah um I, the they, double weather team he lost to with Amoongus? That is something. Double weather. Uh, uh, oh Harley, my. Harley Tran, the one that he oh. lost to with Amoongus? Yeah, that is yeah. Double weather. That's, That's hype. That's hype. I, I can know. see the vision. I can see the vision. I, I'm glad that you can see it, because I don't know if I can, but yeah. <laughs> that, That's... Uh-huh. Uh that is... Okay. Well, yeah. Is so, sure, so yeah. you see, the Titar Exedrill are both weak to fighting and ground, and Pelipper is <laughs> not weak to fighting and ground. Right? It there makes sense. Go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pelipper gets to tank all of those hits. Uh -huh. Dude, you can oh. you can oh, switch in your Titar and get Rock type Weather Ball to hit the opposing Volcarona. True. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right. you can, wait, no, you can use it. You can switch into hit Ensign with a terror with a rock move instead of a water. Move. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Play, play around the pasture bear. Terrors to flying. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, okay. All right, then there's uh, Neil's team in top eight as well, which is like the old torn stuff. Running air slash, so I have to make fun of him because you know, come on, just just run Bleakwood, just come in. If you're running this stupid Pokemon, at least gamble a little bit. Agreed. Um, and then, uh, other than that, like, it, it's, you know, Fire, Water, Grass with the Hearth Flame. Um, we've seen teams do this in a couple of different fashions, usually the Scarf or Shifu, but this one is Mystic Water. And the Fluttermane is Booster Special Attack without a uh, Ghost move. It's running uh, Substitute instead. Um, seems like a fine set of Pokemon that, yeah, just kind of like the other teams, like we were mentioning, like Brady's team and Scott's team, just really well-rounded balance stuff it has the option to go aggressive but mostly um just looking to outplay you if it's in a bad matchup i think one it's... notable thing though is like you were saying earlier if you didn't have a matchup into brady's team that's on you and uh that is what we saw is uh, cm bolt just kind of click and call mind i don't want to like you know attribute a quote that's like false or not but i had over i had secondhand heard that neil said yeah i didn't have a japan balance match i'm like what yeah, no, he, he didn't. Yeah, that, that is something that, he that's said. what he said. That is something he said. I do think Neil was maybe a little bit tilted when uh, he said that. So I don't know like how true it is exactly. Because um, I think he just lost to me and then also lost to Brady uh, immediately yes. after going from 10-0 to 10-2, I believe, or something like that. And mm -hmm. uh, just was probably generally tilted. And so I don't know how true that statement was but um i mean he lost to it twice so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. he lost to brady twice i don't know if he lost right, right. To other uh matchups it looks like he might not have played it again uh i mean he mm -hmm. beat Ale, yeah, again. which is like a very similar team it's close enough yeah i guess right it's, it's a special attack a special defense boosting pokemon but uh it's a little weaker too um or shifu i'd say but you know mm -hmm. yeah uh yeah no that's I do think that the the one cool thing I would I will really take away from this team is that so I've I've been saying booster special attack Fluttermane is unplayable right now the games just like either the games are too fast paced and you just really want speed booster or the games are uh, you're playing against like a grindier team and you really want to be able to switch out it just feels really bad to have to stick it on field especially since you want to lead it a lot of the time um, and so uh, where speed booster does not really have that problem and so substitute is a very cool tech because you know a lot of the things that want to switch into a Fluttermane that can really uh, pressure it don't really like. Uh, like giving you a free turn to click substitute things like um, you know ogre pond water you have to decide are they cl clicking redirection maybe you trade the flutter main maybe they just protect and attack substitute is a pretty safe middle ground play um, if they switch into an amoongus substitutes a huge punch to that that's one of those places where you'd really like to otherwise switch out your flutter main um, and so yeah I think that it's a, it's a cool way to keep it on field when really that's been the problem with special attack flutter main is I think it has it struggles to stay on field sometimes um, and so yeah I think that's one really cool innovation Man, uh, let's talk about the last team from Brandon Davis, um, who kind of with uh, Psy Spam and tried to one-up 
uh, Jesse, the hot dog man on stream, um, <laughs> by performing an even greater feat and Don't going worry. for the Terra Grass KO your own Pokemon. It was such an awesome highlight moment that you have to go find the, the clip and watch it. I think Sierra posted it on Twitter. The delayed uh, one-hit KO graphic coming up was easily the funniest <laughs> part of the weekend. It's because there was that hesitation. Yeah. Of, do, do we play that? Does that constitute us playing this? And then they're like, yeah, screw it. Just play it. They're like, yeah, that was a one-hit KO. You play the graphic. And then they threw it up way late. It was awesome. Oh, it was so, so amazing. And I believe Brandon went on to win that set. Um, yeah. You know, just, like, that was the second game. The first turn went terribly, uh, and then the, the the third game was totally fine. I mean, I guess for, yeah, Brandon was able to turn it around. Um, oh, there we go. Yeah, Adi ended Hold up finding. I just want to say, why why is it that if I type Sierra Dawn into the Twitter search bar, a person who I follow, why does she not come up? This this fucking <laughs> stupid website is so so. I, uh, it's easier for me to Google her name and find it. Okay. It's held together by string. <laughs> It's a mess. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Um, I saw... I saw what's funny is Scott doesn't even hold back on the commentary. I'm pretty sure Scott says, like, that was the worst harassalization of all time. <laughs> Scott is such a gem. He's so funny to have, like, as a caster. Well, they crushed it for your game uh, with the, uh, the amount of puns that they My... snuck in. <laughs> I, I think the funniest thing I've seen in a long time was after my winner's interview, they cut to Scott, and he just has this look on his face, like, he's holding in the biggest laugh of his life, and then he just proceeds to go into, like, a midlife crisis. He's like, <laughs> I've been doing this for ten years, what am I doing with my life? And it's just, I, think I, I, I broke Scott Glaza, and I feel horrible. <laughs> that, the there were some really good lines, but I know the one early was that you both, you know, were leading Torn Glim, and uh, it was from actually from Evan, uh, who said like, "Yeah, they're both leading the same thing. Neither player wanting to play catch up here." And I was just like, "Oh, this yeah. is this is going to be a good set. <laughs> going to be an excellent set for so these funny. guys." They were totally using what they were given to the best effect. Mm -hmm. um, that was awesome. That is awesome. Um, Okay, so talking about teams, though, Brandon, we didn't actually talk much about his team. Iron Moth making the cut with the Meat Beam. Um, notably, in that stream set, I think why, part of why turn one went so poorly, or a, 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 a decent a part of it, I guess, was the Meat Beam also just missed mm -hmm. <laughs> on turn one in that yeah. game, second game, and then he was just, like, KO'd his own Pokemon. I, I actually thought it was just, like, a, a funnier option than forfeiting, uh, but maybe maybe there was just a bit of a misclick <laughs> or something. I, I, I heard he like timed out or something, but I'm not sure. I can believe that. I I saw he I saw his, some he t he tweeted something about it, and it didn't seem like it was a it was for laughs. But yeah, <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a team though that's like a bit different than the size band trick rooms that we've been seeing. Uh, Iron Moth a bit different. Um, I know that we've seen some people run Crown on Trick Room before, but um, to see, Make it this deep is pretty impressive, and then uh, Ogre Pond Wellspring also uh, a quick shout to that one because, um, yeah, just the double redirection. Uh, I, I didn't realize just exactly how different this team was than some of the other uh, size spam teams that are trying to do it and not, you know, going the distance. So Brandon, you know, really thinking outside the box for a size spam team that can uh, top cut a tournament. I, I will say, Brandon. Brandon is Sorry. also one of uh, no, you're fine, you're fine. Uh, Brandon's also one of size bands, like strongest soldiers, if you will. Absolutely. Uh, he, him, and Brian Collins have been very consistent with like variants of size spam uh, or like hard, uh, trick room. Like this one's not even really hard trick room. It's kind of more of a semi room, even though it has a lot of pieces that normally appear on hard trick room teams, but. Um, like with the Gallade and uh, Ursulina that you almost never see outside of Hard Trick Room, but it is a really cool team. I didn't get to play him personally, but it is uh, pretty cool that he was able to cut with a very unique team. Also two Iron Crowns and cut. Let's go. Yeah, no, I, I had the... Uh, I'm going to say Fortune to play him day one. It was uh, <laughs> interesting seeing the team sheet and having a whole 90 seconds to figure out what the hell to do. <laughs> It was sort of one of those things where 
it was a lot like our set where it was just crown lando trying to damage each other and i actually th completely threw the first game because i looked at his team i saw it was special booster and i'm like oh my lando probably outspeeds this and then i just got my field slept turn one by uh expanding force and it did not outspeed it so <laughs> mm. that was lovely but yeah i I do not wish to play that team again. Brandon's a very nice guy and a very good player, but yeah, that was not a fun match to be on the <laughs> receiving end of. That is the uh, the beauty of uh, open team shooters. You can still do some crafty things like that, mislead your opponents. You think you know everything, but then actually the Iron Crown's just fast on a Trick Room mm -hmm. team. Um, mm -hmm. Same thing with like you know certain other like uh, EV spreads. You can get a little devious with, but. Uh, talking about other teams, though, um, in the top 16, top 32, day two, whatever you guys want to mention, uh, we talked about most of the top eight teams here, or maybe all of them, but any other teams that stand out to you guys that you want to give a uh, shout to before we uh, wrap up talking about Vancouver, I guess? Interesting I to see the Marco Sun team do well, because I was messing around with it a little bit before I was testing it, and it was just like, you know, it's a good team, but... It's just so weak to bolt. You give bolt the sun, and then you only really have like <laughs> your flutter to deal damage consistently into it. Like I mean, before Terra's and all those mind games, but it's just like I, I didn't expect this team to do well. Mm -hmm. So seeing it do well, that's you know it good for Carter. Mm -hmm. I also I also was testing this team out too, um, and I kind of had the same thing. It was like you know the uh, Torkoal is still very very strong. You know we didn't see it on the uh, the Ursuluna team to cut, but uh, it. It still just I think there's something like forty percent of teams where it will just sweep through a lot of the a lot of the jank that you're gonna see at uh, like original like Vancouver Torquil you know like like Ursula for example you know they they try to set up trick room well guess what you're slower right so stuff like that uh this this team is really good into but man raging bolt is just so so difficult um oh, it's and awful. and I remember I think I posted in in tub like hey is there a way to like make this for a graph beat raging bolt is there like any for a graph set that beats raging bolt or like <laughs> stuff like that it's like nah you, you can't do it so. Um, but it, it is a, it is a very strong Pokemon. Uh, it looks like Carter had a had a really strong run. Um, although, of course, like the losses are the opposite of what I, I was talking about. Uh, that's not entirely true. But um, yeah, a really really know. strong. He, run he day went one. five and zero. He went five and zero against Raging Bolt in day one. Um, I was yeah, just running through checking it, and then yeah, the day two um, lost for to team reasons or whatever that's, else. That's um, actually interesting. He did very well against the bolts day one but then day two he played a lot less bolts and then day two just didn't look like it was his day so that's interesting actually yeah yeah i could have just been not. a day of thing um mm -hmm. and yeah mm -hmm. i actually uh I, I was the one that put carter on the team um I, I was like you know if you like sun you should try this uh this version this is probably like the the one of the stronger versions of sun right now that isn't you know like literal size spam trick room kind of stuff mm -hmm. um and I just remember Marco doing well in a tournament with it, and I was like, "This looks like it could be um, up your alley." So, um, yeah, the, I, I, it was cool to see uh, it do so well in day one. Unfortunate that it didn't uh, shake out too hot day two. But yeah. it looks like he was the highest finishing nine five. Uh, yeah. Let's go! Mm -hmm. Hell yeah! I just thought That's it casual. was poetic as hell to uh, have two years in a row Vancouver be won by a Sun team that an established <laughs> player did well with previously. Right, um, right, right. Kind of Right below that, Dylan did have a Skeledurge. I never got to the bottom of that. I never asked any questions. I was, or I, I was asking a lot of questions, but I never sought out answers. I just was like, huh, why is the Gator uh, around? Who invited you? What are we doing? Uh, it does uh, It does beat It does beat the Combined Raging Bolts. It, it does. Yeah, Ma also said it was a, it was a tough match. Oh, well, because of uh, Terra Fairy, you, full, you can full wall Raging Bolt, basically um because of unaware and then also like the the, the cool thing about skeleturge is with wisp and terra fairy you can like do a lot of funky stuff against like um like urshi for dark and some uh of the, those other pokemon so like i could kind of see it. it like the the pokemon actually does have a lot of tools and it is pretty interesting but yeah like okay. i can understand also like i respect the um like somebody to actually go out of their way to bring this Pokemon that is like pretty pretty much like nobody else is even looking at. But yes, they yes, one yes, with yes, your yes. favorites, I guess. Tell me if I'm capping. Does this Mon not just six O your team? <laughs> uh, I huh? think I can. Well, no, no, no. I have I have a um, I have a Tyranitar, so I think I yeah, and it gets wisped. My Tyranitar I mean, is gonna one shot. I, bro. I, I, 
I think Skeleturk might not like taking like a, a helping hand expanding force is the one thing. Yeah, yeah, a helping hand expanding force also well well does kill it, but yeah, that's fair. Um, Funny thing to fair. mention, John Mark actually lost a game in his set to Dylan because he forgot that Torch Song is a sound move because who the hell remembers that Torch <laughs> Song is a sound move? So he subbed up in front of it and then it just went through and killed. <laughs> no. Yeah. I, I remember hearing that from a, a couple tables down. <laughs> like, just... Uh... Uh, That's too funny. I, I think that... You know, uh, this, is, this is the opposite. We were talking about how Neil said, yeah, I'm not going to face Japan Balance. Um, and cut by not facing Japan balance um, or facing it uh, only once, right, in, in, in Swiss. Uh, Dylan said, no, Japan balance is, is, is so real. A combine bolt is the thing I got to be. I'm de dedicating. I mean, there is some other utility for sure, but uh, it, especially Wisp. I think Wisp is just a really good move right now in general. Um, but, hmm. yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's funny that. And then to be fair, I'm sorry, Mont. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're the one. You, you're the one he hit. So... No. <laughs> oh, wait. Montana won, though. Oh. No, 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 no. This is uh, D oh, Dylan. Oh, no, okay, yeah, it's Dylan. Oh, yeah, bye-bye, bye-bye. Uh, yeah, and he, and he also played... Uh, there was one more here somewhere, right? Um, I thought I saw one more. Uh, where'd he go? Okay, maybe not. Uh, oh, yeah, here, Brandon. Right. Uh, it's a different team, but um, another... It's close enough. It's close. It's close. The, the thing... The one thing, which is... Uh kind of troll is that if you come to the west coast and vancouver expecting there to be a lot of japan balance there's a good chance that you just may not hit that matchup because there's like a lot of as jesse said earlier there's a lot of players that just like to bring more fun stuff it's what yeah. I, gotta say. I, I think i think that's right i think that like if there's ever a tournament where you're allowed to disrespect like standard balancey stuff a little bit um, even though it's picking up in usage, this and it, and it won the tournament, right? Like, uh, or it got second in the tournament, rather. Um, yeah, this is probably the tournament where you're allowed to disrespect it, just because of the um, the tendencies of the both Canadians in general, as well as the the Northwest Pacific Northwest player base in general. Um, you could kind of make that meta call. Yeah, uh, there was one last cool team I want to talk about um, I I that we haven't one. given a shout yet. Um, it's the fifteenth place team, Adi. Um, go ahead. Oh, and I have another one. one after this as well. <laughs> okay, cool. The, the two, two, well, two. I don't think it, I don't think it's gonna top this. This one was really interesting to me. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like I've the never, ideas I've behind this team this because before. you have like <laughs> so. What I like is that this team is like three pairs of two, and that's kind of cool. Um, mm -hmm. Like you, you have like Dragonite and Chien Pao, which are like you know really good together, and then Chiyu and Fluttermane, they do like a lot of special damage, um, and then like Dondozo, Tatsu, Giri, and I feel like you can probably bring like four of the like two like or two of the two pairs you know um and that would be like really annoying to like figure out like you know what are they gonna do when are they gonna switch in that don tozo and stuff and i think it's like a really well crafted team pretty it would probably be pretty annoying to face revolutionary honestly T telling my yeah, kids this so. is rinya son <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah uh th this person beat joe garte in the winning end um which i know joe wasn't oh, yeah. super happy about but uh that's, that's, that's gotta feel rough yeah it's not a great feeling um but yeah i mean still good you know we've been <laughs> we talk about comfort is king they've been using the same team since december of 2022 <laughs> 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 um yeah all right uh michael jesse either of y'all have teams that you wanted to uh to, me to pull up uh, this isn't yeah. particularly a day two team, but if you scroll down a little bit, okay. okay. Oh yeah, is it, is this, we might be talking about the same one. A little bit more, a little bit more. T t t tell me Could who. Be... Number. I, I, I do think... not know the number or the name. Oh, there it is. I think... <laughs> Fifty-eight. Fifty-eight. Okay. The Pikachu. That up. <laughs> Let's go. I, this I have the looked. Coolest at... thing I've ever seen. This guy actually had a crazy schedule. I have seen the Pikachu, and I have beef with it because. <laughs> like the Pikachu is not using the Eviolite to any like success. Like it, it has Endeavor. Just run Focus Sash. No, no, no other Pokemon of the team has it. The Sash is available. Just run it. There's no way this Pokemon is bulky enough to use Eviolite. It's so funny. But yeah, no, he played. Uh, I think his losses were Darevon and Brandon. And Adi, you know who Darevon is. I don't mm -hmm. know if. You no, no, the I do, other I stuff. Do. He, okay, yeah. Derevon, uh, Brandon, and then uh, Joshua. So, like, everyone in, he lost to made day two. Pikachu is, like, so close. It's mm -hmm. 
Very impressive. Oh, no. I, I feel like I would have told me that he lost to the Pikachu. Right? Maybe he did, but... I... Uh, <laughs> that's something you bring up because, you know, that's... Uh... <laughs> not something that you guys are never going to bring up again. Like, <laughs> that's going to be brought up it's, a lot, it, if anything. It, it's true, it's true. Rajan lost to Pikachu at Indie 2022, um, and I think... <laughs> do you still bring it up now? <laughs> I think well, he still brings it up now. Right? What? Was that Max, Max B? B's? No, that was not. That was, uh, that was um, Happy Doc JJ, I think, was the person using it, or something like that. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I met them in Chicago Local once. Uh, yeah. Um, now, ESM, was this the same team you wanted to mention, or no? Yeah, it was. <laughs> uh, of course, of course. I mean, there's there there's some interesting stuff that just barely seemed to miss that you know one six three. Um, see, uh, so notably, you could talk about Vijay's team because that does look yeah, like Vijay went five four, right? Doing... Yeah, one of, one of my locals had to figure out who Vijay is by yeah. losing at like three two to them and getting knocked out, and that was uh, something that they didn't find yeah. too fun. Vigem Vig missed points. There, we're not, we're not talking about it. Sorry. Um, no, wait. Oh, wait. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I was looking in the uh, the standings website, so I didn't realize that that was not, not a big points. <laughs> oh my god, I did not. I did not know what Gary was running. I thought Gary would be running on like eggy stuff. Do you, that's that's a East Wind's work. What if what if top sixteen if you brought a Lolan executor? I'm just I'm, that's what I'm saying. I. Uh, okay, I, I scrolled through, and, you know, I thought there were some cool teams that, that went 6-3, but I actually didn't see any cool teams that went 6-3. Um, <laughs> was, was, was this the Heesby and Gudra that was on stream? No, 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 no. I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because they, yeah. they, it looks like they way. styled on, um, they styled on NJ and then lost out or something. <laughs> so, Adi, I know you don't want to talk about the teams that didn't get points, but at 4-5, and five, Taylor Dixon, I think... They uh, are the person that's been streaming <laughs> on Twitch, like with War Turtle. They're like a War Turtle main. So I've like, seen like, that. Oh. Sempra lost to that on like <laughs> in like a Tommy tour or something. He lost to a War Turtle in like top. Yeah, they, they've they've been streaming like Battle Stadium and like tournaments, just like only using War Turtle. And I I know they use Reggie Steel, so I feel like it's gotta be the War Turtle guy. Oh yeah, no, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that. You know what? That is the set that you run on it. I think that's right. Uh, does it get follow uh, me? It doesn't get follow me, right? It, no, <laughs> we, no, it doesn't follow me. We'd be looking at this. We'd guy. be using that. Yeah. If it follow oh, me, we would be running Blastoise. No, we we'd be, be running, running Ogre Pond Water. What are you talking about? <laughs> we have a better no, water than follow me. Use. <laughs> yeah, thank you and follow me. That's okay, actually that's good. True. That's, true, that's true. That's true. That's true. That is, yeah. Chill, bro. Chill. <laughs> no, we, have, we have. I still think you would use Ogre Pond Water most of the time. But yeah, that's true. You would use Blastoise. <laughs> no, Blastoise no, I wouldn't would use Blastoise so... because Blastoise would be meta, bro. Like, I wouldn't be using it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I would, uh. I would be so down for Blastoise to get the same treatment that Electabuzz uh, got with Hell you know, yeah. Hell the, yeah. the, the follow me, fake out follow me flip turn. Like it has a lot of really cool supporting options. Um, but would, uh, just having another water type in the meta that's not Ogre Pond or Urshifu would just like make the like team building process a lot easier as well. I think uh, right now we just have those two options, and then like the other ones are just all kind of suck. So. Yeah, so Rafa, what? we could have the triple fake out, Firewater Grass, and it would be all starters, too. <laughs> oh, <God>. Yeah. <laughs> the um, only thing Blastoise is missing is those, uh, is a broken on switch in uh, activation ability, and so they have to give it triple. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it would be so there's broken. There's no rain dish at the same time. <laughs> yes. and they, they should honestly do that. Like, they did that for... Um, ride on i guess that's the sun and gets the boost like why can't blastoise have drizzle and rain dish combined as one <laughs> exactly see um, i don't even know if uh blastoise's stats are that bad mont i hold on hold on i gotta I go look. can't imagine they're it's good. like a base 83 special good. attack but it does learn water spout so it, you know you actually can kind of make up for it yeah you can do like 40 percent to you know instant on the switch in no, you can shell smash, and that's water spout, and it's actually pretty good. We're talking about using the, the support set. Why not do both? 80, it's got 79, 100, 105 bulk, 78 speed's pretty middling, 85 offense is also, yeah. But if it learned follow me, it would actually just be good. Like, uh, 
if you actually look at historically Pokemon that have learned follow me, like follow me, except for Ogre Pond, they've only been given to Pokemon that have bad stats, basically. And mm. Blastoise actually would have, other than Ogre Pond, the best stats of any follow me user. And so, like, along with the access to Fake Out and other support options like Icy Wind, what well, like you guys haven't played, uh, I assume, Gen Eight uh, Dou, which is yeah, um, yeah can't say a spell gun format. But uh, Blastoise was legal, and it had Follow Me and Fake Out, and it was a tier two Pokemon, basically. Like it was very, very good, and that's because, like, because uh, that was back when it still had Follow Me before, like, they changed the mechanics of how how the game uh, works. But it mm. was a very, very good Pokemon, and a lot of people used it. So, like, I have no doubt that if it got Follow Me, it would be a very strong Pokemon right now. Hell yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. Um, now. What was I going to say? Um, before we uh, move on, Adi, I think the we have to talk about the fact uh, we haven't mentioned Smart Money yet. Oh. And... <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, we have, we have our Smart Money. Um, and uh, I had um, I had Colin, ESM had Al, uh, he had me, uh, Agati had Joe, and Adi had Geo. Um, I think nobody made day two. (laughs) (laughs) Gio and Joe both lost their win ins. Um, Gio lost on stream, uh, to Taraka, so a tough, tough loss there, but yeah, uh, (laughs) no, no, we all whiffed. That that is, it's just like, gotta be one of the worst smart monies we've ever done. Which is funny, looking at the cast we picked, it doesn't seem like you would have no day twos, but god damn. So, so it was who, who won? That's the real question. Who finished the highest of the... the... Joe uh, I think Colin was above Joe. Joe, Joe finished 67. Colin oh, wait, finished... No, Colin finished 54. And then Gio finished 52. Let's go! I won! I got... Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> smart, <laughs> 53. smart money of the 6-3 picks. Let's go. <laughs> oh, my God. That's, that's the real... That's the real uh, that, that actually would be pretty fun is... Who can guess the person who's going to finish the highest without making day two? <laughs> we got the smart money, no. and then we got the uh, the scared money. How about that? Or the um... no. We talked about the anti smart money draft once. We like, talked about anti draft, but for worlds. it's very toxic for worlds. Yeah, we, we were talk- talking about this for worlds. It's super toxic. Oh, we're never going to do it publicly. Money, that, stupid money for worlds is some of the funniest the, like content though. Like, the no. the structure. Was so funny because it was pl- you draft players oh, and you had to yeah. get the most championship points to not make day two, <laughs> and that was the yeah. goal. No, the structure was actually oh, fire. Yeah. I can't remember who thought of the idea, but it was basically Dude. you picked people to go through day <laughs> one, and the more you get their championship points in score uh, mm. if they make if they miss day two. <laughs> That's so crazy. And so we, 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 uh, I'll give you one that isn't even like one that we were doing it for like toxic reasons. We were talking about for like metagame reasons. It's like, I was going to pick Colin. Colin had a lot of CP and it was just like, even if Colin, you know, like, like Colin's just like a high value pick because he had a lot of championship points. And so if he missed, I would be looking good. Um, and so, yeah, it was just funny. <laughs> it was a very toxic system though. We don't, I don't want to talk. We, we didn't actually do the draft, anymore. just to be clear. We never actually picked players. We don't we, we actually did it. We were just laughing about the idea. <laughs> I think in general, though, uh, coming going back to Vancouver, like there are a lot of really good players who ended up drowning in six three. Um, like in day one, like we, uh, the ones that you mentioned earlier, like that we picked for spark money, but also James Beck, uh, and Brian Collins. Uh-huh. There's like Chuppa. a four person stretch like, there that's just Chuppa. insane. Like James, Geo, Chuppa, Colin, all back to back to back to back. That's just wild. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nubjit also just barely missed after doing really well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We talked about Joe. Uh, Ryan, defending, runner up, highest placing player to actually show up to the tournament, um, went 6 3 as well. Just like, yeah, so many good players uh, went 6 3. It was, it was, and honestly, a lot, of, like, I mean, you look at me and Alex who finished worse than that too. Like, a lot of players, good players that did, did worse. It was just a, it was, it was a weird tournament, hey, right? I, I, Hey, I could have been six and three if I played it out. I totally could have been it. I could have done it. I could have brought it back. Mm-hmm. I mean, I even just look at the five fours. Like I recognize most of the names in the, in the top of the five four pool, right? Like it's it, it was a weird tournament. Um, it was a tough tournament, honestly. Um, but also just 
I think that when you have this diverse meta game, uh, it, it's really hard to be right on your meta calls, and a lot of people are. Uh, I think like it, it feels like I don't know. You, you kind of to some extent playing the variance game, but all that all that being said, you know, you, you still got to play well, and you still got you most of these matchups you can still outplay. A lot of the times we saw James, I think, uh, play his way out of what I think uh, were, were two couple couple of difficult matchups and cut and so. I want to mention kind of random, but a uh, a bit of a fun fact was that I was, you know, like using this team with Colin, Chuppa, and Abe. And if uh, Colin was replaced by Burns, I would actually have worked, been working with all of the people that I won over in regional finals. Um, I, I, I beat Abe in Fort Wayne forever ago, and I beat Chuppa obviously recently. Um, and so now I think my next plan is to get the people that I've lost to in regional finals. I'm going to see if I can get Emilio <laughs> and Jake Major to team up with me for World. Breaking um, Emilio to retirement that's, that's... for a bit. <laughs> Emilio, I, I know, I know, last Worlds didn't go well, but me and Jake Major we're gonna we're considering adding you to our group, of <laughs> team building, and we would love to have you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, yeah. Emilio Emilio's yeah. not playing, and uh, I think Jake's also not playing. I think Jake's, Jake's been uh, judging. doing a lot of judging. He's been judging. Yeah, so he's yeah. Been I, met Jake, I met Jake for the first time this weekend. They uh, yeah, they warned me about something that happened day two. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> um. Anyways, let's uh, let's go ahead and move to the last segment. The so, top is right. I've got I've got one more. Okay, I've actually got I've got some stats. We we have we haven't got too long. We got a little bit of time. Um, all right. Worst. We. I love doing this. I love looking at lab maps, talking about the the win rates and stuff. Um, and I've actually got I've got two, I've got two things that I want to I want to share with you. First off, uh, assault vest is no longer the most used item. Um, it used to be item. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It used to be the most used item. Remember, it was on like the the smart money picks from the casters. Assault vest was on there. Um, <laughs> and like a couple of I don't know one of these regionals recently. Uh, I remember. Uh. I, I listened to a podcast with um with the the person who made Lab Mouse, uh and and they were like yeah like Assault Fest has been the number one ranked item at every single regional this thus far in this format um and this is the first time that it's been overtaken I think as far as I know the the podcast came out like a month ago so maybe it happened at put it on too. three naughty I don't know what you're no, talking no, no. about no no you got to guess it you got to guess it what item uh, it is, mm. would it just be uh, it's, it's, sash, I know I, guess. Uh, I was gonna guess booster energy. I'm gonna guess leftovers. <laughs> oh wait, you think leftovers on that many teams? Oh damn! That <laughs> That's oh, they, that, I don't think leftovers is in the top ten. <laughs> oh, wait, I think really? that's yeah. <laughs> leftovers has a lower usage than Heart's Flame Mask. <laughs> um, uh, no, no, Jesse, you were right. It's Focus be, Ash. Yeah. Uh, Sash is at fifty-eight percent of teams have a Focus Sash. Fifty-five percent of fifty-five percent of teams have Assault Fest, and also it is tied with Citrus Berry down for second. Um, so, and then, and then Alex, you weren't that far off. Booster was fourth. Uh, but yeah, it's really, can you open up this image on uh, stream and post it in the discord? (laughs) 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 Acrobatics. I have some questions. <laughs> What's the problem? In fact, if you keep going, fake out fire blast, giga drain, hydro pump, they're all in here. What is, is that? Like the TM? Like they, somebody's given their mom the TM? Oh, level? that's probably what it is, huh? Like what was that meme that Freeze I started? It's the TM for overheat or something. The, the, yeah, the flame. Yeah, yeah TM for overheat. Like, that, that's got to be what it is, right? I, I, I would. I hope. don't know. All right, and then the uh, the next one is I like to do. The uh, the lowest win rate Pokemon. I don't think I actually put it on screen, so you couldn't see it. Uh, what Pokemon that has above, let's say, two percent usage, um, has the lowest win rate at this tournament? It's Miracle. Nope. Uh, uh Ogre Pine base form, maybe. What? Um, uh, no, and no. Uh, this these Pokemon are not super common, but they you 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 Metagross? definitely see them around. Uh, no, but I feel like Metagross is usually one of their. That's that's a good guess. <laughs> Damn, Mammal Swine. No, I actually don't know how many uses Mammal Swine had. Not it's not one of the Snowmons like Nine Tails or Articuno. It's not. Although Snow did whiff this regional, we didn't talk about that. But not a single Snow in day two. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. 
I thought it would have been. The I'll give Marina. You, not for Marina. My last nah. Um. Okay. I'll give you. I'll give you the placements too. Uh. The the highest placing for the top one is uh is number forty. So it actually did get uh to oh. top sixty four with six three. And then the other one got best place was one hundred and eight. The second second most or worst win rate. Pokemon. Oh wait wait wait! It was fortieth, and that was well, not in day two. One hundred eight. One hundred eight. Mm-hmm places on screen so i know what it is now ah shit my bad well they, okay uh so the second second is uh is latias yeah it's on screen um that that pokemon yeah. had a uh 35.6 percent win rate despite having someone go six three with it or five four with it it looks like so you know that makes sense mm-hmm. and i then, think Latias is also just not good latias is better guys uh <laughs> yeah actually the snow nine tails of lola was uh was the fifth worst used pokemon or fifth fifth place fourth place one of those two um and Smeargle was third, fourth place. Uh, Smeargle was third, Close. Ninetales was fourth. Uh, you still haven't guessed the first place one. Um, do you want to just keep when we say it? Yeah, let's just go, yeah. let's it's, go for it. I'm it's, uh, it's Grimmsnarl. Grimmsnarl had the lowest win rate oh. of all Pokemon. Uh, Dude. Multiple uses. Yeah. That, that funny, f- funny story. Me and Alex were very close to bringing Grimmsnarl to uh, <laughs> regional. Well, not. I wouldn't say very close, but we were somewhat close to bringing It was Grimmsnarl. like our initial yeah. pick. We were like, dude, yeah. screen time uh we figured out how to break screens and then you know just kind of fell off of it because it was not broken enough uh it so. was not a regional winning team is, is the best way i would put it um yeah. mm-hmm. some other notable pokemon that had really bad win rates uh was a of blood moon 43 percent win rate despite relatively high usage um for rigraph wait that 40... was my pick that was my pick yeah that's that was like <laughs> it, it's bottom 10 right but it's not it's not quite it's not as low as like mm-hmm. uh, the snow monster did really poorly too you mentioned that as well uh, these, this is the top five. Uh, Gapdos was actually in the bottom, the top five. But uh, yeah, looking at like high usage Pokemon that did really poorly. I'm looking at Ursa Luna. I'm looking at Verigraph, both of whom really, really flopped this regional. Um, I, uh, Iron Crown actually, despite having uh, one in top cut, had it was down there at 45 percent win rate. Um, so we had I, two in top cut actually. Yeah, I had two in top cut. Yeah. And really carrying that thing, huh? That <laughs> show up. That, that would have been number one for sure. Probably. Mm-hmm. I think, oh. I, I will say, I think Iron Crown is, like, I was talking earlier about the, like, Roaring Moon being underexplored. I think specifically for Calm Mind, Iron Crown is one of the most underexplored mods in the entire meta, and I think it's really, really broken, and more people should be using it, but uh, I don't know if anyone will actually believe me on that. <laughs> mm-hmm. no, I, I was a believer in it for a little bit. Like, when it first came out, that was something that crossed my mind. But it was just sort of like, oh, wait, there's Incin. Oh, wait, there's Rilla. Okay, never mind. But, you know, <laughs> I guess you, you put it with the right partners. You, you give it to a good player. I guess some things can happen. I think that's the main thing is that, like, Iron Crown generally, like you said, it's, you know, it's omnipresent at locals. I think a lot of people are going to one regional, uh, two regionals a year, like to like to use it, like to ladder with it. It's a, it's a fun thing to use on um, Battle Stadium, whereas I think most serious players uh, like to, like to you know, play, play best of threes or practice on showdown or whatever. Um, so it, I think it does have a, uh, it's not that it's a bad Pokemon by any means, it's just that it has a lot of people who did, uh, very poorly with it. And that really, you know, offset the success. It has of a bad rep. Players. That, that size spam has a bad rep because like, I don't know, it has like, people have the, uh, like opinion of it. Like that it's only bad players run size spam. Like that's what everyone's been saying for like, um, ever it's since like easy. red a, mm-hmm. Is that yeah, not true? Ever, uh, I think, <laughs> I think, I think, yeah. It's just like if if your friend's going to their first regional and you don't have to give them, you give them size spam, right? And, and now now you give them snow, which is also I think part of why snow did pretty I think, poorly. I think he is a bad player. This is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. The, the, so I uh, agree. Rafa got it in chat. Yeah. Tatsugiri is the highest winner. Or Tatsugiri and Dozo were the two highest winner Pokemon. Um, Wait, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no yeah. Way, I, mean, bro. I mean, at Vancouver, there's enough people going where it's their first time. They hit a dozo, they just don't know what to do. I feel well, like if you're bringing dozo, you're at least going positive or four or five at the lowest. That's, just off of that alone. That's really what it is. Is that well, one, yeah, like the I don't think Tinglu Dozo is a team that like a lot of media, like bad players want to run. It's just like not the play style that people expect when you think of players who are relatively new. Um, if you look at the names who are using uh, dozo, it's uh, the, the, you got the two 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 guy, and then you got a lot of really experienced players who did pretty well with it, right? Like uh, Carl, Carl's uh, is good and got top sixteen. The rest of them, 
like I would say, th these are like pretty good results, right? Um, so it, it's a very consistent team. It Dozo seems to have this problem where it goes six three a lot. It gets top of twenty. It's very consistent in that regard. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's why it, it has a high win rate. You're not going to see a ton of players at the very bottom tables using it, except for uh, this so guy right here. Six threes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so many six threes. Um, yeah, uh, that's all I have about uh, Vancouver. Uh, all, all the trivia that I have. I actually, there's one more thing that we could do very quickly if we want to, which is that there was a, a Japanese tournament that had 121 players online. Um, that was won by mm -hmm. uh, Colonel Vete. I know this because I, uh, I know that they tweeted a rental code out of their team, um, I think. And they said they got 12th in the GC is what I think I said. 12th place in the GC. Yeah, I've seen and then, around. yeah, so they, they tweeted out uh, the, the open team sheet. I don't know if that was out yet, but um, that is something that is pretty cool if you, uh, see this comp in the GC this weekend. Maybe be aware of what, what it's trying to do. Um. Mm -hmm. Is this the sturdy? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's the sturdy Archaladon stuff, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I Very think cool. it's uh, Stalwart. Is uh, it Stalwart? Stalwart? I no, I think it's sturdy. It's from what I know. Uh, I know there has been a comp going around with Stalwart. Uh, it's the... not it could be stamina. It's That's not... all I know for certain. All right. <laughs> It's time to find out. Wait, ja uh, Alex, don't you speak? Don't you read? Don't you read Japanese? <laughs> you yeah, 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 yeah. So here, I'll tell you that the first character on the psychic move that Bronzong knows is To, and then it's like Ru, and then uh, uh, no, 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 sorry, it's I already messed, I messed it up. <laughs> oh, I was, I was, I was uh, mixing this one up with the Vovo team. The Vovo team is stalwart. Okay. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Yeah, be aware of that. Uh, st sturdy Arca Luton. God, that's crazy. I don't know if the team tournament was open team sheet or closed team sheet either. But um, yeah, uh, I don't know if any of the other players posted teams. Um, honestly, other than the the first team, I think they're all kind of boring teams anyways. But yeah, um, we can go. Well, no. Go ahead. Okay, I, I have a question about this. Do you think they... Because uh, Rajan was streaming the um, GC from his, his end last time, and he was running the sturdy... Uh, Ar Archaladon. Do you think they just independently came up with the ideas? Or, I mean, I think that there's a chance that one of them played Rajan and like, like got no, inspiration. No, do not give anything. <laughs> don't give Rajan credit for anything, dude. I... This guy is <laughs> Yeah, you know, I think that I think that's probably what happened. Actually, I think that you know they uh, they saw it in Rajan's builder. They took it just like just like most good team builders do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to. The calc is right. All right, what damage calc do I have up on my the window? Okay, I don't actually have one. Apparently, I have the damage calc window open, but I don't have a calc on screen, so that's fine. Um, except for helping hint, that one's on. Uh, but yeah, so this is a quick little show which we do, or a quick little what do you call it? Game show? I don't know. Game. That we game. do. Mm -hmm. Where uh, oh, it actually does show the calc that I was looking at. That's funny. <laughs> it just didn't. All right, here we go. Uh, so it's a quick little show that we do, a little quick little game that we do, where we uh, like to uh, name a calc. Each of us will have a damage calc, and then uh, all the rest of us will have to guess uh, a number and hope that we are in the percentage range that this damage calc will do. So for example, if I said 222 special attack, modest, Obama Snow Blizzard, into 252 HP, zero to special defense, Obama Snow, uh, everyone would name a number. And then if they, guess, if they said a number between 34 and 41, they would get it right. So that's how that works. Uh, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, does anyone have a calc ready? I have I'm one. gonna. I'm ready to go, and I'm gonna start it off. I'm gonna actually just steal Mons from the the chat that he mentioned earlier. Um, so I want to know how much does Water Spout from Max Modest Blastoise <laughs> do to the instant that switched in? Uh, we're not gonna give Blastoise anything else. So it, it's just Max Modest. You know, maybe it was like Whiter of Shell Smash. I don't know. It doesn't have an item. It doesn't have like Rain or Helping Hand or anything. Just how much is that Water Spout doing? To let's say, what's the calc default instant, Naughty? Can you pull it up? Yeah. Um, well, I uh, know you can't find out instant stats. <laughs> true, true. You got to know his stats. But yeah, it's 236, 124, careful. So, like, mildly specially defensive. Let's do it. All right. Pretty specially defensive. But they... see, the real problem is I don't know Blastoise's stats, even though we were talking about them. I don't know if we mentioned the special attacks at or not. <laughs> Well, let's see how much that water spout is, is I'm, I'm doing. Yeah, not not a salt vested on the instant, obviously. All right. Oh, yeah, just uh, wait, wait for Alex will call on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my, my bad. You're good. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, I'll start with you though. Um, but yeah, once you're ready, just say like I'm ready or like I'm I'm locked in, and then we'll call on everybody. And then yeah, you'll also do the same when you're presenting your calc. You'll pick people to, to go. This is a full HP water spout, right? Just modest. Oh, true, true. Yes, yeah. it is full HP. And, and did, you, did you have an item yep. on it? I forgot. I got a number. No idea. Uh, yeah. Do you have an if item? If I really was. Uh, no, no item at all. Okay, cool. If it was really stupid, ESM, I would have done, like, after you <laughs> took a fake out from the instant. And <laughs> it was a max roll, if you know how much damage that is. No, just so stupid. Anyways. <laughs> um, yeah, I got a number. I got a number. Um, okay. Uh, so let's start with Jesse. What was your number? How much is it doing? 82. 82, okay. Um, ESM? I was gonna say eighty-five. All right, Adi. Yeah, I'm in the same range, eighty-seven. Eighty-seven. Okay, so let's go plug it in and find out. All right, Last blank set. To modest. <laughs> modest. Yeah. Water spout. <laughs> didn't even have uh, one in here. Oh man, it is oh, doing. Wow. <laughs> this is a little sad. It's doing a uh, sixty-nine. Wait, 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 wait. Did I miss something? What, Jesse? What did you say? I think I said 82 on the top. Yeah, 82? Yeah. yeah, you're in there. You're oh, in there. Okay. These dudes, they overestimated Blastoise. Apparently, That's crazy. I'm actually pretty sad that you yeah. guys were wrong on the high end. That's uh, fucked up. Uh, <laughs> this is really depressing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like actually upsetting to look at. <laughs> but you were in there. You were I, in there, you get the point. I um, hope I wasn't right, but I am right. I, I just know. I, I, now, see, so now I gotta pull you, up War uh, Turtle. I think that I think that War Turtle is better. <laughs> Even with Follow Me, I think I might run War Turtle. <laughs> After thinking about it a bit, I might also be real willing to run War Turtle. Um. Okay. So... Good. Stop. Chill. Guys, chill. All right. All right. So Jesse, you get it now. Um, do you have uh, your calc ready, or do you want somebody yeah, else to go first? Do. while you think of one? No, I've got one ready. All right, let's go. Let's have you go then. All right, so this is the one that came up over the weekend for me. It's how much does 252 Adamant Choice Band Terra Ground Lando Earthquake do to a Urshifu Rapid Strike with like, let's say, I don't know, what's what do the Mystics normally run like the half mm -hmm. decent? 252 like. No, uh, it, it'll be like less bulky than that. They normally have uh, it wasn't. Less, I think it'll it be like, like 64. Like, yeah, 64. We'll say 64. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so 60 HP for uh, defense? Yeah, we'll do Yeah, yeah. We'll do that. We'll do that. All right. Um, and and you have say. to remind me, all the multipliers on the Earthquake, Helping Hand, Terra Ground, Earthquake, uh, and Choice uh, Band? No helping, no helping Hand, just right. Max Adamant, Choice Band, Terra Ground. No, no Chen Pao on the field? No Chen Pao on the field. Okay. Just raw next to Torrent. And are we doing Earthquake or Stomping Tantrum? Earthquake. Question. <laughs> uh, I was about to say that's... <laughs> it's it's a it's a minus uh, one double damage stomping tantrum. <laughs> no. You're right. Um, you're right. Yeah, ner uh, nerd of now would probably yell at me because I think there's like slightly different roundings on those moves. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> all right. Um, it is still 75 BP either way. Um, I have my answer. I have mine too. I have my number as well. All right, so Jesse, you can just all call. Right, so I think we're ready. So Jesse, pick uh, pick someone to start. All right, let's start with ESM because he's on the left of my screen. Okay, uh, I'll say ninety. All right, Alex. I was gonna say ninety-five. I'm a little bit. I still, I'm kind of in the same boat though. I don't know if it's killing. All right, Adi. No, I'm a believer. I'm saying it KOs. Let's go with uh with a hundred and four. Okay. To, this this so pull up Landris Landris hits hard. Landris got a lot a lot of attacks at. Put put two fifty two attack in it. Give it the Terra ground. That's that's a lot of multipliers to put oh. too. I think it has, Urshifu has slightly more bulk than Iron more Crown, bulk. and I did the calc for Iron Crown, and it doesn't kill. So that's what I'm going off of. Yeah, well, Sorry, you, Adi. you, you would be right. Correct. Uh, yeah, the 80. That, go ahead. So the reason that this came up is because in order to win a set, I had to go for Icy Wind, Earthquake, absolutely destroy the field and hope they didn't protect, and they didn't protect. Let's Not, go. It took three KOs to win that set. That was 
Oh, sure. oh, I, I thought this was I see one with a torn. You mean with Flutter? No, with Flutter. I had to send my poor Flutter to the Shadow Realm. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Honestly, that's a play that I love to see. Like, if you if you pulled that off on stream, people would be screaming. So Alex um, loves Earthquake himself. That's just all there is. I to do. It. I do. I gotta appreciate <laughs> it. That's hype. It is hype. It is so. Hype. You just gotta get your telepathy Dialga <laughs> origin in there, bro. True. I will. I will. Okay. Now. Yeah. Um, I I have one. Unless... No, no, no. Right. I like my EQs to hurt a little bit, ESM. That's the thing. You can't, you can't just have them for free. Um, Adi, go ahead. Yeah, all right. So uh, as I told people, I ran Serena at this regional. Um, it was it, honestly Serena, pretty good. I think I think actually that po that Pokemon was not the problem with my team. The problem was me and also some other stuff. But anyways, uh, Serena, pretty cool Pokemon. I'll be using it in the Global Challenge, uh, and uh, I ran Bullet Seed on it, and I had really good on the team, um, and I had uh, a Chet Pal on the team, so it got a lot of multipliers on it, and. Uh, it's cool because it can go through Sash. So let's see. Uh, let's say a Serena with uh, with Grassy Terrain up, clicking Bullet Seed with four hits uh, into a four defense Chen Pao. Sword of Ruin? Yeah, yeah. Sword of Ruin and Grassy Terrain. All right. All right. <laughs> of, course it's, dude, of course it's Sword of Ruin. It affects the entire field, and there's a Chen Pao on the field. <laughs> yeah, but it's yeah. immune to it. Anyways, you don't um, to answer that, dude. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, Andy, I don't think you said the investment on this arena. Maybe oh, sorry. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, let's say, let's say, one fifty six attack, adamant. Okay. Yeah, and four hits, right? And four hits. And four hits. All right. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I got a number. Okay. I got a number. Mm, it's multi hit. Multi hits are fucky. But um, I, I did I tell Rafa this calc. Um. All right. Uh, Alex, what you got? I'm gonna go with 98. 98. Michael, what do you bet you? 92. All right, and Jesse? I'm gonna mirror the last set of calcs where I'm the believer that that kills, so I'm gonna go 102. 102. All right. Let's pull it up. Bullet Seed. So, uh, sadly never came up in the tournament, but I did have this calc in mind. Um, Four defense with Sword of Rune, yes, and Grassy Terrain, if I can find it. And uh, Bullet Seed with four hits. And I think that all of you were in the range. I think that, yeah, it's a... Wait, wait, how much does it do without Sword of Rune, Audi? Do you mind clicking it? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, okay, that's one, that's one random. <laughs> so, uh, so it does 85 to 103. If you have four hits, it's a, it's a, it's a roll not in your favor to KO. And if you have five hits, it always KOs. Uh, so it's 50-50 to KO the Chet Bout through Sash. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I've been I've been on it now. ESM bring us home with the final one. Okay. So the final calc I have for you guys is Iron Crown, of plus two. Of course. Para Psychic, expanding force, and terrain with Helping Hand in into a Gouging Fire that has a Tingalu next to it, and the spread <laughs> is two fifty two, four HP. Uh, sorry, 252 HP for split off, and yeah. Okay, that's, that's so Vessel of Ruin, of and the multipliers we have are plus two Terra Psychic and Helping Hand, hand. obviously Psychic Terrain as hand well. and Terrain, yeah, Expanding Force. This, that's a lot of words. That's, that's a lot no. of... <laughs> that is big. Um, I'm, I'm ready. Mm, yeah, I got a number. Uh, sure, I got a number. You want to call on someone? Uh, Adi, because you sound the least confident. I, I am probably the least confident. Um, I think I think this has to murder. Right? I think it's like 120. Uh, Jesse? I'm going to go 160. I, I saw that thing put in work against me. I know that that thing can hurt. Alex? Uh, I was closer to Adi, 128, but... Yeah, I'm worried. I'm worried. This guy's so dead. Like, I don't know. We're, we're well past 100. This is not a Dynamax format. I don't need to know to between 100 and 200. I just know that he's dead. <laughs> uh, all right. We have the Iron Crown with uh, Speed Booster plus two special attack. Do you see the special attack investment? Just max? No, you 172. Speed booster. Be Sorry. Speed Booster, right. I, I didn't yes. survive, but yes, it is the Speed Booster set. Um, with Terra uh, make Psychic. Sure you take yeah, so take, it, take off that booster energy because it's going to give you the special attack boost. I'm liking these numbers already. Wait, why is it giving me this? 
Oh, okay. Okay, I see. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, okay, God, is this everything? Oh, we have not done Helping Hand. There's, helping... Right, there's no Vessel of Ruin. Uh, you, oh, you have yeah, Beads of Ruin. I got, okay, that. Oh, Lord. <laughs> that, that... And, and you had a Helping Hand, too? Yeah, Helping Hand. All right. Uh, oh, uh, no! 133.9 oh. to 158.4. Oh. <laughs> so close. Oh, um, nobody was in Jesse, the range. You said 160 on the dot? Yeah, it was 60. Okay, yeah, yeah. So it looks like you were the closest. I was near, but I was like 5% off. You were like less than two. Um, you know, we take those. We take those. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, no technical score for anybody because we all just whiffed on this stupid one. I, it, it's not a nice <laughs> format, ESL. I don't even know. I don't yeah, understand. It's... Do you remember when we had to I know exactly? <laughs> yeah, it does 170%. I had to chip it for. I have to keep it for 15 after, after Dynamaxes. God, I can't believe we did that shit. Horrifying <laughs> times. Man. All right. All right. Well, that is that is going to uh, to wrap it up from us. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Um, Michael, Jesse, thank you guys for coming by. I really appreciate it. Do you all have any uh, yeah, any you, plugs, man. any shout outs? Some... Uh, no, not really. Just thanks for having me. I see a few of the homies chilling in here, so they don't need to really get shout outs. Look at me, Marcus. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah glad that they glad that people came out um to see it and thank you both for being on. Mm -hmm. uh, if you if reminded you just... that this was gonna be on YouTube. I don't know if we reminded people beforehand, but um maybe we did, maybe we didn't. But yeah, if you came in late and you didn't see the beginning, uh it's gonna be up on YouTube tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So um yep. make sure to check that out on Audi's YouTube CK four nine. Correct. We, we mentioned this at the beginning, but I'm going to say it again. Don't forget to sign up for the GC. Don't. Uh, it's the third time. At this point, you probably, hopefully know. And also Los Angeles I, and Mexico City. People have been missing. So <laughs> things are mine. Yeah. Um, I, I, I did one quick plug is that I'm going to be doing a team report with Adi with uh, more details on my team and releasing the actual rental and, and uh, uh, OTS of the um, team that I ran for top four. So I know... A lot of people probably are interested in, in getting the actual paste and trying it. So uh, I held off on actually releasing it because uh, we're doing the team report. So yeah, check it out whenever, whenever it comes out later this week. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. add a little more chaos before it ends. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't I don't think it's going to be out before the Global Challenge uh, lock-in, but you know, certainly going to be out for uh, before EYC Thank for God. all those people who are <laughs> going to have a miserable week pre prepping against this. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, that's going to wrap it up from us. We're going to send you over to Tom Hayden, who, like we mentioned at the beginning, also, you know, it's going all the way circling back, uh, is hosting a bunch of uh, a bunch of 3DS tournaments for the 3DS gen. So we're going to send you over to him. This tournament is uh, is on the Switch. It looks like he's hosting his regular Tuesday tournament. But yeah, uh, go say hi to him, and uh, we will catch you guys all later. Peace out, peeps. Yep, peace out.